we are uh, about to start, uh, I would like you to introduce yourself uh, so that it is on record as to who is present here this morning. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm Dinesh Virakodi, Chairman of the Commission. I'm Riaz Miller, Commission Member. Naimuddin, Secretary, Minister of Investment Promotion. I'm Priyat Vikram, Acting Director General. I'm Kushan Kodtok, Member of the Commission. I am Mahinda Bhatmalal, National Audit Office. Sorry? I am Mahinda Patmalal, Senior Assistant Auditor General, National Audit Office. Samudika Jayaratna, Deputy Auditor General. I am Chandani Virasingha, Chief Accountant, Ministry. I am Dinusha Jayavira, Legal Officer, Ministry, Investment Provision. I, I couldn't hear you. Dinusha Jayavira, Legal Officer, Ministry of Investment Promotion. I am UK Bandara, Additional Secretary, Ministry of Investment Promotion. I am Sujeeva Rajapaksa from BDO Partners, Engagement Partner of this audit. I am Gerard Dias, uh, Consultant Audit, BDO Partners. I am Ruan Karnoratna, Director of Finance, Port City Economic Commission. I am Bhimalindra Rajat, Director of India, Department of Trade and Investment Policy. I am Vindya Veerasekara, Director of Legal and Corporate Affairs of the Colombo Port City Economic Commission. <coughs> So, Rohan De Silva, Colombo Port City Commission. Dimanta Kinigama, Director, Port City Commission. Sudat Prasanna, Additional Director, Foreign Exchange Department, Central Bank. I'm Rukshana Jayathilaka, Additional Director, Bank Supervision Department of the Central Bank. I'm Minoka Vikramasinghe, Director Legal of the Central Bank. Uh, I'm Kushan Samarthunga, Senior Manager IT, Colombo Port City Economic Commission. Ravan Vikramasurya, Director, Banking and Compliance, uh, Colombo Port City. Are there any excuses today? There was a commissioner seated at the back. Would you mind coming in front, please? Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Saleh Vikramasurya, Mr. Saleh Vikramasurya. Uh, has informed us he yeah. will not be able to attend. Um, he has sent a letter yeah. and uh, we accept that for personal reasons. Uh, who else? UK. Who else? Is that it? That's all. Anyone absent? Any absentees, uh, Mr. Uh, Secretary? No. Uh, announcements by the Chair. Uh, Honorable Rauf Hakim has been appointed as a member of the committee to fill the vacancy occurred due to the re resignation of Honorable Mujibur Rahman from the membership of the committee. A confirmation of minutes, minutes of the 17th and 18th meetings of the committee. They have been circulated. Okay. Somebody propose, second? Let me okay, right. Thank you. Um, business of the day, regulations under Kalam City Economic Commission Act number 11 of 2021, published in the Gazette's Extraordinary 2299-46 and 47, dated September 28, 2022. Uh, before we start, um, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, any, can any, I say something before just, we start? Yes, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. Before we start, um, is there anything that you would like to uh, bring to our attention, please? Uh, no, just I, I want to say something. Uh, the last meeting, uh, unfortunately, I was on leave, uh, so that's why I couldn't attend the meeting. And uh, what is this? You had raised two issues. One was on the website and the accounts. And I'm pleased to say that those two issues have been resolved. So I thought maybe it's better to say that at the start of the meeting so that we don't get into a debate. Yeah, with a positive thing. And also, uh, for the record, I must say that most of these commissioners are working pro bono. So that day, actually, we were given that letter one day before, right? So that's why we couldn't. Uh, I would have others found some way of coming for that meeting. So please, uh, I, uh, please accept our apologies. Thank Your you. apologies are accepted, Mr. Chairman. I am really glad that we were able to push you to get this done within a matter of four days, which was delayed by almost a year. Yeah. So thank you very much for finishing the audit. Uh, thank you very much for having uh, uh, an online presence. Thank you. Uh, uh.
excuse me sir uh, i also want to apologize myself uh, that day by mistakenly sali said uh, since uh, april i was appointed but i was not uh, participating to any meeting that's incorrect uh, i was appointed in march uh, and since then i have never missed any commission meeting and i was chairing management committee meeting every week i was attending every week day to day and i'm working voluntarily uh, to the committee sir, commission sir right uh, dr uh, uh, vikram uh, thank you for that i have a question that is arising from what you just mentioned how many commission meetings are you supposed to have in a um, year is it specified or is it every month. month every month every month every month so um, since when 2000 say um, last year how many commissions meetings did you have uh, except uh, the during the change of the chairman and december we had uh, every month meeting so we had 10 meetings yes. is that yeah. and this year you had that one or not uh, this year we are going to have meeting tomorrow right uh, today today sorry right. today today right um anything else uh, members you want to raise from last 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 it's a positive you no know, can you submit uh, to us uh, or have you submitted to parliament the audited accounts and uh, it is addressed to president and from the president's office you will come to parliament uh auditor general just one moment auditor general now what is the procedure when an audit is completed yeah we have to uh, submit the uh, audit reports together with the account set to the relevant minister yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, to the relevant minister in uh, this case relevant minister is the president, president. that's why we have submitted the opinion to the president and we have submitted another four copies to the commission also right so opinion. you have actually submitted it to the minister in charge yeah, who happens to be the president yeah, yeah. right okay no, no. so when we uh, submit uh, to submit to the president or the event that the subject minister first priority is president or the subject minister that has appointed that him as uh, uh, other minister that is the minister that's okay that's okay right sorry somebody was saying something That that's what right, I said. No? Yeah. Because so the commission is yeah. appointed. Seven so member commission is appointed directly by the president. Yeah. President. President. Yeah. yeah. Rising from uh, uh, rising from the discussion we had last time, uh, we raised the issue uh, on the the shareholding structure. Right. We we asked that question. Uh, would you be kind enough to explain to us the the factual situation? Well, the question was, who owns the Colombo City, uh, Colombo Port City Economic Commission? That that was the question. Uh, so may I? What is the commission? Which is a regulatory body? Yes. 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 Y
commission they are, they differ from two others one is like a human rights commission this is not like this they are being i don't know why the word commission came there this is kind of a small uh, technical no, no, issue even there. even like, uh, BOI came yes. as a Colombo Greater right. Economic Commission. Yeah, so, but that commission, same word used here, has a different connotation. While you are appointed by president, but this acts also acts as a company, under right. registered company right. limited. So it's you a have business dual, entity. Yeah, so right. you have dual thing. One is your policy maker itself, yes. on one hand, and then you are mm. monitoring the business itself. Now, for instance, um, uh, UGC and Human Rights Commission are the two different bodies. Right? That is correct, Honorable Member. That was the confusion. That's right. So th this is now clear. Mm -hmm. Thank you, because all this time this uh, this uh, uh, clarification uh, was not made. This is the first time this clarification is being made here. So while it is a commission by name, it is in fact a corporate entity yeah. That's right. that wears a dual hat mm -hmm. yes. of like a chairman and a CEO or regulator and a player. There, Chairman, if you permit me, since we are on the same topic, there I see a futuristic danger because you make your own principles which are supposed to be monitoring and then you also are the implementing body, right? So there, is, there can be intra-contradictory uh, interest, you know, I mean, we have seen this. As we grow, there can be new challenges. Secondly, with last week's judgment, the Act Chapter 3.20 is in question now. It says, this commission is not liable to any of the local or foreign court cases, any of the commission members. They are freed from this. Uh, so well, well, I mean, uh, honorable member. But then the I'm just lighting you. You yes, may sir. have to work on that right. because last week judgment, it said the new seven member judge uh, yes. bench said no. We are bringing in new. Uh, th there's a particular technical word for which, that. Which one? Is that will be implemented in Sri Lanka. So one can cite you later. You be careful. One can cite uh, you and uh, say. Uh, honorable member, mm. now the first clause is the commission is a body corporate with perpetual succession and a common seal and may sue and be sued in such name. Yeah, that's right. That is then being counteracted. Of like all our acts, chapter three point twenty counteracts that. Sorry, I am. I'm, I'm. I'm not sure of. What, what you are referring to? What you are referring to? What what it says judgment? all commission members are? Which judgment is this? No, no, the Act, Act Chapter Three. Yeah. Point twenty. Clause twenty says all seven members are unliable. I don't know what's the word unliable. You, you know more English than me. Unliable or non-liable? Yeah. <laughs> immunity. Like. Immunity, like. right? Yes, okay. Immunity. From any case that we arise, probably negligence or all those yeah. matters. Either a local court or a foreign court. Uh, AG's office. Um, can you can you uh, uh, educate us on that, please? Anybody? I think in my knowledge, first one refers to the commission. No, I was just referring to the AG, Deputy hmm. Solicitor General. Oh, sorry. Who is the who's from the AG's office? Never am can a classic thing is free freedom make out of Vadakran Vadakran with a kinekian Napoleon. Under judgment, I think I can say I will go liable. I will praise him. I want the doctor Avanti Pereira, Doctor Miss Avanti Pereira. Where is he? Can you call and find out where she is? Please, thank you. Yeah, we, we, we will we'll come back on. to that. Yeah, that's right. something we have to we right. check. No? So, so let's get to the, the meat of the business. So we, what we have done, um, uh, our analyst basically went through the regulations and prepared a note uh, for our use. Uh, what we will do is we will share it with you uh, so that we can just follow that. Uh, s some of it are self-explanatory and we can just say yes and no move to the next one some have some clarifications that need to be made you all got that copy right not not, not. where is the copy hard copies i like that non -copy. yes so we will bring the laptop where are the hard copies you made if then uh, uh, Ideally, we should have sent them earlier so that they could have also had Yeah, we decided on that uh, just today. 
No, might as well just take a look at it so it's easy. Everybody's on the yeah. same page. No, that's page. fine. Hikma yeah. Khan. Okay. Uh, give one copy to him. Yeah. So we look at uh, the slash 46 cassette, right? So what this uh, gasset uh, does is um, it provides legislation, provides a breakdown of the application process for persons interested in conducting business within the port city and the economic commission's capacity and process of expect accepting and I guess approving such applications. That's what it is, no? Yes. This set of regulations? Yeah. Correct. So part one, license, obtain, license obtaining procedure. After submission of an application, a letter of approval is provided in principle. Commission to act as a single window investment facilitator. Once all legal and regulatory requirements are met and the commission is satisfied, license will be granted. License is valid for a period of one year, correct? Yes. So this is the basic thing that you want to do. Now the comments are, is there a timeline for the evaluation process for an application once it is submitted to the commission? Yes. Uh, Chairman, sir, uh, the timeline hasn't been defined, right? Because it's going to be dependent on the complexities of the project that's coming in. But uh, when we did our benchmarking studies, we've sort of identified that certain types of industries, certain types of businesses, approvals are given within very, very relatively very short time frames. Uh, whereas uh, what we define as secondary <coughs> investors, if you're a primary investor coming in to get uh, uh, buy a plot of land and then do a development, those types of projects would generally take uh, longer. Do you have any specific thoughts what kind of business are you going to promote? Uh, the idea was, um, sorry, if I can uh, come up on the, the presentation, I think the chairman of the committee had requested for a presentation. Uh, is it possible to put this up on the... Yes, it is. It's on that screen. Oh, dear. Very it's small. too small. Too small. Sorry about yeah, that. Okay. Anyway. Uh, you know, my fear is that uh, otherwise it will happen the same thing like in BOI. No, no, no. You will end up in having all sort of businesses which are not necessary not, or making yes. any profit. Absolutely, sir. So I think uh, when the commission was established or the special economic zone was established, uh, the idea created here, unlike in Sri Lanka has a long history of special economic zones. It's nothing new to this country. Uh, the idea of creating the Colombo Port City is a special economic zone that's focusing primarily and solely on the service sector, right? We are looking at transforming whereas everything else is heavy, heavy manufacturing, etc. And this was the focus. So there were a list of uh, what is defined as thrust sectors also coming from the Act. Uh, they, they come from international trade, shipping, logistics, banking, uh, corporate headquarters operations, regional distribution centers, then of course uh, tourism, retail uh, operations, uh, retail uh, industry, uh, of course uh, education and healthcare services, etc. And, and professional services. So not any any longer the financial hub or whatever. No, that the financial hub. Offshore banking is mentioned even in that. Yeah, yeah, it's there. It's, it's there. there. No, it's no, there. I mean, earlier it was named as uh, Colombo Financial, whatever. Uh, no, no, no. no it has no changed and it has gone little beyond that uh, All right. financial centre. The scope center is uh, much broadened. Yeah, yeah. much broadened. On the issue of the process, um, now uh, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka and Telangana and the new state, they also have these promotion schemes. No? When I studied, not studied, when I read their process, it says that you are st number of steps. Once an individual or a company applies, you acknowledge your application, first of all. You say we have received such such date and give a file number or whatever. Then you give within one week there saying that this is estimated time of processing. So that person, because if you have to take environmental authority, you know. But then of course, 
the access that this area is a different area. It's, it's a particular area which the laws, that's why the debate, parliament debate also came. For instance, environment, do we have to get environment authority clearance if there is a project that sensitive, let's say hospital, so waste management comes, right? Medical waste management comes. So does the existing law applies to the same zone or the zone has its own laws? Um, uh, if you don't mind, yeah. Honorable yeah. Member, we come to that later right. on. Right, okay, okay. Sure. sure. So shall we just, yeah. Process, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. So should you, should you have some uh, timelines defined or you don't think it's so necessary? When, when we come through the, the benchmarking study, so when we came up with these two regulations, the application form and the fee structure, there was a benchmarking study that was done. Right? We started initially with eight uh, special economic zones and jurisdictions globally. Uh, we narrowed it down to four Right when we went down to the deep dive. And the four that we narrowed it down to were DIFC and the Dubai multi-commodity exchange based in the UAE. And then, of course, uh, Singapore and Mauritius, which are more uh, jurisdictions. Uh, when we looked at these, they don't really have a time frame set in place. But uh, when you look at these instances, within, generally speaking, within about a week, uh, the approvals are given, and it yeah, is. But then, if you I may, right? Yes. I mean, Singapore and uh, the, the Mauritius, they are actually the entire thing is um, yes, uh, no. special economic zone. No? Correct. Right. So the, there are no two uh, conflict, conflicting laws. Yes, right. It's one and the same, isn't it? Yes. Now you are not looking at a financial center inside Singapore, no? Yeah. yeah okay. You are looking at Singapore. Correct. The benchmarking study looked at or Singapore. the country of Singapore. Right? Yes. And then you are looking for the country of Mauritius, the state, the state of Mauritius. So, so, I mean, there are constitutionally defined or whatever the existing legal infrastructure or the laws that define these things, as opposed to, say, the DIFC, right? which is an entity within the, the, the UAE. That's correct. Right? So there may be two different sets of laws that apply to DIFC and the UAE. That's how correct. liberal the UAE may be, right? So I, my, my point is, why do you not compare like with like? Right? Singapore and Mauritius is one. Colombo is more like DIFC as sir, opposed to sir, Singapore and Mauritius. Sir, uh, no, last uh, Chairman, uh, actually we took uh, DIFC and DMCC actually the, the, uh, for the main comparison, <laughs> but took Singapore and Mauritius to get some of the inputs into uh, the, the studies. Yeah. But basic comparison goes with uh, DIFC and uh, DMC. Dr. Priya, with yeah. my, I'm not an economist, I confess, right? So I don't try to, there are economists here. But in reading into this, just reading, not studying, Poland seems to have, the last years, you know, econo the Economist Intelligence uh, Report has recognized Poland as the European model success. They give, they give awards, right? The Polish model seems to be very close to us because the Poland country is socialist. Now, our constitution says we are socialist. Therefore, we have all the other rights of the 158 rights, I think, workers have. But then they create this port separately in order to go with the new world uh, um, globalized market. So how do they manage these two? The parliament is dealing with the same thing. I think it will be a good term of reference or case study for we'll you. We'll do that, actually. Uh, we'll why, do don't that. You, why don't you do that? Sure, sure, we'll, we'll do that. Yeah. On that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll but, do but, that. But, but I just want to... Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you are Mr. No. Ravan. R E V A N. Ravan. Ravan. Vikramasurya. Uh, Mr. Vikramasurya, could you tell us uh, whether you want to have some sort of uh, timelines or not? That's our question. We have. Yeah. We have. Don't measure anything. It doesn't get done. So I, I like that idea. So okay. Thank you. And we have created a. Uh, a portal that can do that so it's defined as a workflow so that entire workflow can actually happen within within hours so as long as because it's all you have to do is to make a decision yes or no decision and then moment that happens it gets connected to the ROC to it's roll on. Uh, yeah, all, it's roll all the other places so um, I mean the benchmark I believe why we should, couldn't do it within 48 hours for a secondary investor the primary of course we had to look at lots of other things but for a secondary investor who wants to start a headquarters or whatever i think within within 24 hours we should be able to approve 
मिस्टर कोडी तो आपको दैट्स एन एक्सेलेंट सजेशन आई मीन आई थिंक यू शुड लुक एट इट एंड सी वेदर यू कैन बिकॉज वेन वी स्टार्ट थिंकिंग अबाउट दिस आई रिकॉल द फर्स्ट मीटिंग वी हैड विद पी डब्ल्यू सी द कंसल्टेंट्स एट द टाइम वाट वी सेट इज इफ यू कैन बी इन द टॉप टेन लेट्स डू इट otherwise let's not even think about it yeah. so right so you have to have a completely different way in which we mindset do things here template. So huh? mindset and a template yeah because i mean if this works then we can apply what works to the rest of the country uh, right? so we must aim at the very very top absolutely that's what we did um, uh, chairman um, we told eny was supposed to be the one who was going to do our process and they gave us the the process workflow and the scope that we told them is we want to be the best or one number 1 2 or 3 in the world in ease of doing business and if we can't get there we would hold eny responsible so that that's the scope because since we are starting with a clean sheet of paper we could there is no reason why sri lanka can't be number 1 in this as long as i i completely agree with you and i think that's kind of the aim that we should have you done aim yeah so so let's work on that and let's look at some timelines let's look at this transparent thing and uh, like mr chairman said you can come up with some uh, internal guidelines it doesn't have to go into a gas app you may also look at case studies you 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 have an international marketing and research team Under we have consultants we actually works with okay, pwc so and ey right. yeah romania and colombia in the latin american block i would just because i am speaking to a professional body I need to at least read and update myself. The last two years, in Latin American bloc, Romania and uh, Costa Rica had um, Costa Rica one. and Colombia had got their awards. So we may study there later, so that we we work with the winners, right? So we'll that do that. We can only can go up uh, from that platform. No? Okay. We'll do that. Oh, okay. So the next one, next one. Let's move to the next one. Very important. Let's to look at. Canary Wharf and the Docklands also. Ah, yeah. Okay. Get some uh, inspiration. Yeah. yeah. So let let uh, next one is. Is there a special fee applicable for a company that is to obtain a certificate of registration? No, there's no any special fee. They have to pay only one fee. Was that something that was raised for? Um, why was it raised? No, I think there were two issues, Chairperson. Um, one was the amount. the at says 1% of the investment will be the overall i don't remember the page no. now but that is uh, when we lease yes. uh, the land allocated right. for check yeah. we and, get 1% out of that and then we had this 4000 or 400 dollars first payment and then i think the question was what is the rationale that we came uh, uh, is it no, this is not that no you not that this uh, is not this that this is about the application uh, fee the application fee covers uh, the fine fine Fine. One payment. Fine. Okay. One payment that is apart from, in addition to one percent, which one is. One percent. It's a separate. That part. It's a that part. Yeah. That issue. That's a separate. Yeah. yeah. Does the re uh, re. This process application. This process application. Yeah. That's a block fee. That's a block fee. Start processing. So once yeah. you send the application, they have to send the application fee. Yeah. So next one. um does the resubmission happen only after a letter of approval is initially issued there is a, uh, there is a follow up to it because the word amend is used implying that already prior to the resubmission a letter of approval was issued and now after the resubmission the issued letter of approval was amended accordingly or is it possible that a resubmission can be done before a letter of approval is issued So this actually comes after the initial process. They want to change something after the initial process only. This comes in, sir. So is that all right? The representative from yes. the AG's office is here, right? Yes. Yes. Right. Since the numbers are small, you know, how many applications we have got so far after the initiation of this? Seven, right? No. Seven. Uh, yeah. For a period of. Sorry, uh, for a we've, period of we've got about seven uh, parties that have shown interest. Interest yeah. within the period of two years since its operation. Uh, no, no. Maybe after the gas gas uh, after May last year. Because last year, yeah, May. Yeah, yeah. Okay. because initially, initially we were doing uh, doing nothing like now. We were preparing tenders, right. consultants, right. and all. Right, right. After May, like after we, May, of yeah. course. Yeah. I'm I'm surprised that even you got seven applications yeah. because yeah. we were going through turmoil. No? Yeah. So, so there is no need to change this. Is that fine? 
please. Yes, yeah. please. Uh, so what it means is uh, approval in principle is granted at a okay. approval in principle is granted upon the application submitted by the applicant. And before the license is granted, if he wants to amend any particulars, this is the resubmission we talk of. Actually, we've adopted the DIFC process here. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Then uh, the next one is uh, 5E3. We are going in the order of uh, the Gasset. In what capacity and how does the commission check the accuracy of the details provided? Especially, shouldn't this phase be carried out prior to issuing a letter of approval? For Chai, example, I have, a, I have a comment on that. Huh? Once yeah, you for example, in the application, it is sufficient to provide that the authorized person submits details of the 10 larger shareholders if the authorized person has more than 10 shareholders. How would the commission determine the truthfulness that the details provided are pertaining to the la 10 largest shareholders? This may happen to this may happen if the applicant is an offshore banking or an offshore company to withhold information for some reason. Or, for example, how would the commission determine the accuracy of the past records, convictions of the application? Or, for example, how would the commission determine the accuracy of the financial performance details provided by the applicant? Would a separate audit be required or one that has already been carried out to determine any malpractices or manipulations in the numbers? Or, for example, how the commission determine the accuracy of the details provided in the education section of individual partners, etc. Uh, Chair, with your permission, I think these are valid questions, but the spirit of the commission, if they are going to dig into this, they would not be able to even present and approve a single application because these are beyond our capacity. So what we do is, what uh, Telangana does is, they get a signature saying any of this detail found to be wrong at any given time, yeah. nothing will be given and they have to pay a, uh, a penalty. That's like there. It's a, it's a law, law in uh, passive law or active law. If you take the active law side, we have to do all this and they may come out with again. Then we have no, we have to have kind of I don't know how, how you are planning. I mean, you said yeah. your consultancy is a very good idea, seven members, and my suggestion is don't have more than 25 members to work for your commission full time. I have UGC. Uh, we have actually 11. UG, UGC has 70, 75. My ministry has 385. It's All that we are doing is supposed to be policy making. It's anyway, only 11. So, one thing I have to say is that the ownership of the land is not going to be legally assigned. In the act, it says to go this way. Yeah. But but if you do this, we can't get our ease of doing business right to the top. Absolutely could could no. we invite the AG's department representative also to come in front so that, you know, she, she can, yeah. If you don't mind, please. Yes, go ahead. Yes. So, so therefore, you're just happy with um, happy with the way it is structured. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure why I'm yeah. for that. I mean, now the authority is so here. Can, yes, but do we have that legal clause that any given time we find? Yes. Yes. Ah, right. So then I think it's covered. Right. But then uh, you know, uh, along with that, this next question arises: in the register which contains details of the authorized person. Which right, which is to be maintained by the commission. Is Chair, in, which, which section are you reading? Uh, so the same, same point uh, in the, the note. Five, this is uh, uh, Part eight, 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 8D in the gasset. Ah, in the gasset, okay. Yeah, 8D, right? We are going in order of the gasset. Yeah. So, uh, is information such as share register the company accessible to people? Uh, to inform who the ultimate owners of the company are, these are generally accessible to the public under the Companies Act, which however doesn't apply for authorized persons conducting business in the port city. This may become a concern for offshore companies due to the possibility of money laundering. Yes, so there would be a register which would be accessible and that would be uh, uh, accessible electronically 
and that would have the details of the applicant and the shareholders, etc. So it is open to the public. Yeah. That is the, just yes. like the company's uh, details. One can get Cha this, chairperson this. with your permission. Uh, there are other independent international uh, watchdogs whom you have to subscribe. Then you can access their database and find out whether these companies are blacklisted and what problems they had and what kind of things that they did. I think those are small fees, like paying for library reference. Mm -hmm. You pay them so that when you are, while you are doing business, you check with your team. I mean, team or whatever, and then if they are found to be, you... Yeah, so that... Yeah, that is due diligence that usually happens, yeah. so, so KYC But some are not business. published. No, no, you know your customer. Yeah. KYC, KYC, KYC is, no? Yeah. Yeah. Right, then, um, mm -hmm. then general conditions part two, uh, register with details of authorized persons conducting business is accessible to the public to the extent determined by the commission. That's what you're saying, right? For any change in the details shown in the application submitted, the license C has to submit a form within 30 days of the occurrence of such change. Maintain and prepare financial statements on an annual basis and after approval of financial statement, annual return has to be submitted. So that is what the, yes. the regulations say. The questions are, should the register containing details of the authorized person have a standard format rather than it being at the full discretion of the commission? How will the register be available to the public? Now that has been Address. established, yeah. right? Yeah. So the first one is up to the, the 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 commission to decide how, in what form it is uh, published, or is there some standard format? Yeah. 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 It, it's just it's basically the applicant's name, the applicant's address, a registered address. The shareholders of the application, applicant, uh, sh correction, shareholders of the authorized person, etc. So it is that there would be a template, and every applicant, the details of every applicant would be accessible online. And with and the, the numbers, business. with the numbers, with the registration yeah. numbers. Correct. Do you have a description of the nature of the business they like to do? Yeah. It's, yes. yeah, they have to submit. Part two of the profile. And, of and actually, they have to submit, otherwise, they cannot get the incentives. Okay, there's a category. Yes. So, to fall into that, yes. Maybe, uh, top yeah, now, in India, of course, the bigger market, they have their own national watchdog groups, volunteer watchdog groups. Whatever the information you give, they are investigative. They go after this company and then inform you and say, no, hey, there's a red flag. How about this? This company. Many, many of the, so I think maybe, maybe you know, maybe there are activists who no wish to, to come, all these things will, will, will fall in. Come into play, yeah. Whether we should encourage that, you know, university final year students and uh, professors who are. Do we have to emphasize on those? I mean, first of all. Now the biggest struggle would be to get uh, yeah. investors. So let's work on it and yeah. uh, be a bit flexible. I don't think that we'll have yeah, yeah, all sort of uh, tougher regulation. Yeah. So, I mean, we are just trying to help you here, right? We are just trying to make sure that, you know, you we will want get the maximum investors. Right? I mean, let me reiterate we want this to succeed, yeah. right? And it is in that spirit we are doing this. Um, how long will the Commission take for reconsideration and issuance of all amended documentation and make changes to the register? So, is that, once again, is this about timeline so issues? Internally, we actually have set up. We have to finish everything within 48 hours. Even actually uh, for the clearance also, we have set up a model now. Mm. Yeah. So those things, yeah. internally we have benchmarks. Yes. Okay. Then on these records, financial statements, right? Records are open to inspection by an auditor or the commission. Ah, records. If there are discrepancies, what would, what would be the next steps? There's another uh, regulations to come with penalties. Yes, there is another regulation. It's in here? Not no, not, not yet, yet, sir. It's we are coming. finalizing the document. Uh, you're, you're drafting uh, adding more it, yeah, adding it's, it's comes with penalties, sir. Mm. Okay, yeah. so yeah. to answer this question. Yeah. Okay. Part three, interim provisions. Uh, so the commission will grant permission under part three in writing to allow authorized person to conduct business at an appropriate outside the CPC. Right? We call this CPC. CPC, bad, bad omen to start with, no? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, 
right so, so the original thinking was infrastructure is going to take time and then you can rent a tower in the uh, city perhaps and then start business yes we need initial 5 years till yes. 2024 so the question is is there a criterion that qualifies an authorized person to conduct business in a designated approved location so i mean would would you you would define or would the applicant choose. say look yeah they can choose they can choose the location now let me ask a practical question let's say the applicant applicant is on the 25th floor of the wtc right and then people who are working in the 25th floor don't have to pay taxes they they are paid in us dollars people on the 27th floor has to pay has to pay, pay. has to pay yeah so in terms of sort of managing labor and you know the 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 distortion in the labor market you know particularly mr chairman you are very much an expert in this field how will that uh, be dealt with i mean if you go beyond that even after the port city commission is fully established on this side of the gold road you have to pay 36% tax and you get uh, you are subjected to whatever the inflation rate is on the other side of the gold road you are paid in us dollars and you pay no tax so suppose you are a waiter in a, at the kingsbury why would she want to remain at the kingsbury as opposed to moving across the uh, road and perhaps even getting a job at the mcdonalds probably will be better off Because of this, uh, because they can pay their staff in dollars. So what they said was, what they told me was, they will structure HR policies where they will hire the top talent, the key critical talent, through that, uh, through the, through the port city, so that they can, uh, so they can handcuff them over a period of time, given the fact that we are losing good talent continuously. So I think we have to leave it to the company to plan and design their own HR policies to manage that. But I agree with you, there can be a fallout, especially. within the the labor structure yeah. that is not it mr honorable bandar now having uh, too many rules and regulation mm. we have always missed the boat i don't think that uh, we should uh, look for tougher you know i mean we are we are not in a uh, 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 You know, they are neither lawyers nor prison officers. Right. <laughs> so therefore, so, so we, we, the, the, uh, we we must leave it to the companies. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Say, you know, I mean, I having mean, too let, many yeah, uh, jurisdiction, uh, real policy. Yeah. No, I mean, let us ask uh, yeah. the AG's uh, department for a clarification on this. I mean, equal rights are they being sort of um, tampered with here? Or? These are matters which the Supreme Court determines, so there's always reasonable classification. And that's the basis on which even under the BOI companies has exemptions. Hmm. So the port city was considered in the in the same light. So, but these risks we were alert uh, alerted to, and and that as as was discussed would be a matter of policy how each individual company will uh, try to find ways to maintain their uh, staff and not definitely it will be happened in such a way. Yeah, that, that uh, is a because if the investors are coming from different part of the world, yes. aren't they? and here I mean, sir everybody has to bring dollars from outside uh, to do business uh, otherwise they can't do anything yes yeah so i mean this is an important point because if it converges towards the top end the dollar salaries it's okay because it's a market it's supply and demand but if it what if it converges downwards what if it converges downwards i mean you have an accountant who is paid 400000 rupees in the fort and you have an accountant who is paid you know 100000 dollars on the other side right i mean there is going to be demand and supply so we are, so, so we we'll, uh, we'll i i later we can debate on this but isn't it the whole spirit of this that will bring dollars to the country no, isn't no, no, it the no. spirit of this whole thing now you say let's say you are cim another person cim You manage to join a company which pays you in dollars. No, no. So that so we are. So isn't the market competition that we are talking about? No, no. So that is why we are talking about sort of the distortion in the marketplace, right? I mean, markets can be 
distorted right. by various individuals, I mean, companies uh, that, uh, you know, have their own rules. I mean, this is not just happening here, it's just happening in other Yeah, places. but over a period of time, I mean, you are the Missouri professor on this marketing, so I will, I will agree with you. But I'm saying that the competition that comes is by step by step injecting, and that's the whole restructuring of the no, organic. No, no, no. Competition is ceteris paribus, no? That is everything else remaining the I mean, same. I, I so don't everything else is not... Re I, I'm just raising a, raising a question, Honorable Raghavan. I'm just saying... Because normally in economics, you assume that others remain the same and you're actually trying to focus on one matter. In this case, others are not remaining the same. So it is not your typical competition example. Mm. This is not so. These are two separate markets. Mm. So all what I'm saying is keep that in mind yeah. because yeah. that is certainly sure. going to be an issue yeah. in time to come. So as long as you have address that and have uh, you know thought about it then I'm okay with that because yeah. it's a policy matter not a legal issue. And the bottom line should be that uh, dollars come into the country. It's the the bottom be. line should be that our people get better jobs and better salaries. Yeah. Yeah, that's so as long as it's converging towards the uh, your top end of the market that should be okay yeah, as long as it go, doesn't go down. I think looking at the world politics I I wish if it happened, but I don't think you are tomorrow morning you are going to get 500 applications, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there is time frame. We learn as we go. So, Mr. Chairman, I think your point is valid, but I think Sri Lanka is over-regulated. Yeah. And I think we should leave it to the companies, I think. That's my humble yeah, that's opinion. That's, yeah, that's the know, point that uh, Professor Bandara brought in. Right. So, so, are there any criteria? I mean, can somebody set up uh, his or her office in, you know, Anuradhapura and say, you know, this is where my office is, but interim for five years I'm going to be here. Or do you say it is within the Colombo uh, business district or is there some, some eligibility criteria or? We don't need that. We don't need that. Uh, in this act doesn't say anything. As long as money comes from overseas. No, no. That says that outside area of authority. So, but then how do you regulate this? I mean, let's say, let's say you, you set up an interim office in Anuradhapura. Right? You're operating out of Anuradhapura. I mean, is there a mechanism so, but, to ensure so, that have, uh, all the regulations have been adhered to? Uh, definitely, sir. Every year they have to come to us. They have to show all the details uh, properly, uh, uh, auditor accounts, everything. Otherwise, we will the not text it. license annual? No? Yeah, it's license. It's only annual. No, this is not the license. No, this is to operate. Yeah, so they, they, they have no license. They can't operate. In the next no, no, year. no, no. You get a license to operate. Oh, yeah. Right now, say you want to run some 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 company in Port City. Port City infrastructure is not ready. But you are operating out of Anuradhapura. And you are saying, give me a license to operate out of my premises in Anuradhapura, but with these tax benefits. Yeah. Okay? With these uh, facilities. Mm -hmm. So the question is. If you are remote, far away, what is the uh, way in which you monitor that that person is adhering to the regulations with, of the Port City Economic Commission? That's the question. Yes. Sir. Yes. So what the says is under Section 64.1, the per, uh, an authorized person can function outside the area of authority as an interim measure in a location designated by the president or the subject minister. So, so that, that is, is the question I asked. You all said something else? No. That is the question I asked. And then you said no. You said they can operate out of wherever that office is currently located. And when I asked whether it no, can no, be out. No. It has to be. No. When you say interim period, is it specified? Yeah, Five it is specified, years. Says. So Five then you can't yet. operate out of Anuradhapura unless the so president can. specifies no, no. Unless, 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 yes. unless the president or the minister yeah. of yeah. shared so, powers with the commission. So that the commission was a, can decide that. No, that was a question. Yes. That yes. was a question. The question answer was decide. incorrect. Answer you, yeah, if you admit it was incorrect, we can... So, you have a, basically, you have a control over, yes. you grant the uh, permission for them to operate yeah. in with location. But that would come with your ability of supervising and monitoring them, yes. whether they are adhering to the, uh, the um, prima precia criterion that the chairperson is asking about. Sir, that's correct, but the location will have to be designated by the president or, or the minister in charge. minister or yes, possibly so the commission, you know. Yeah. No, no, it says it's the minister. 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 Yeah. So, okay. the minister has to designate... Let's yeah, say, for yeah. example, oh, you know, 
शांगरी ला टावर ओ वर्ल्ड ट्रेड सेंटर ओ द न्यू जॉन किल्स बिल्डिंग ओ हम ती लाया इफ इट इज डेसिग्नेटेड ओनली इन दोस प्लेस सो यू अनलेस अनुराधपुर इज डेसिग्नेटेड यू कैन ऑपरेट एट वन राधा थैंक यू then uh, right so that was a question so that eligibility criteria is determined by the the minister in charge and that uh, so that can be monitored then the part 4 extension of licenses section 20 uh, 24 in the gas act 28 in the act uh, what is the timeline for license renewal process is a late applicant for license renewal able to carry out daily operations during the time in which the license is being renewed yeah i think license renewal process is necessary so you encourage them the 11th month or the 10th month to apply you give them and you send a proactive notice to them yes sir. right depending on your time i mean these are basic common sense no but if they don't comply to that then their onus is on their side yes. because they are not applying they can't apply so every 10th month you generate an auto Uh, alarming to them and requesting them to uh, apply and uh, keep to the criterion so then it the so proactively the, you have yeah. to do that proactively yeah. yes. it's within the system sir okay yeah. so then what it means is then they cease to operate cease to function if the license is not, not obtained not, by the yeah so you are assuming here if you apply in the 11th month within the 11th month you will approve it Yes. If you make a mistake and don't approve it in the eleventh month, then the <laughs> onus is on you to let that person continue to operate as long as that is legally possible. I'm okay, hmm. but it has to be legally possible because you are taking a big responsibility, and you are saying you will do it. What if something happens? Your computer system crashes. I don't know. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah. right? As long as that person doesn't turn around and sue you, saying it was your fault. then sir we need to give a uh, temporary extension something like that if yeah, there is yeah. a so situation that's like, like that cross the daga yeah that will put it that we will put it sir yeah. okay okay that's good yeah then you have uh uh, uh part sub 6 su surrender of licenses so what that means is application to be submitted to surrender license license will be cancelled if business does not commence within 6 months license will be cancelled if business contravenes provisions or regulations the, the 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 questions are who would monitor whether the authorized person will not engage in any other activity in the 3 months prior to making an application under regulation 26 is there a standard document to be filled for any person that may have cause to ensure the license is not cancelled Clear, no. Question is not clear to you. Twenty. So surrender of license twenty six C, right? Yeah. What does it say? Application to be submitted to surrender license. Yes. So, so, so you have to apply to give up your license. Yes. 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 You have to apply to give up your yes. license. Yes. Yes. And there, Chha, may I raise a question? Yes, please. Um, And why? With this attached to this is that uh, as I seen, I was in. interested in media so i pointed to look into the media business no now transfer and resell of this license you are silent on this now ex applicant takes it and waits for about 2 years without operating anything and the market grows and he or she goes and sells the license now this what happened at monarch now all this 118 mini hydros license are taken but mini hydros are only license and they are marketing <laughs> auction in those license at monarch uh, upstairs uh, here <laughs> if you don't do anything within first year itself yeah. license automatically will cancel okay right so but they can, can they can they after taking 3 months from you license from you resell to a party ek silent method ek i mean because no, no. all can't. the details of the authorized person their hmm. shareholders are already given so they can't sell to a, we have said there will be a separate regulation for that for the process are ek ek eklan kela thine license owner only can operate kela namut vikunanda bah transfer karanda bah kela kohewat meka very silent meka yes yes close we have it yeah 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 i will say it is they can transfer the company no so they can sold the company, the company then they have to change the and you can't impose A law, like no, we know, cannot restrict them selling the, the company, but they have to. 
shareholders. They must be shareholders. They must be at liberty to do that under the uh, Trimeli I, Companies Act. Yeah. May I answer this? It is in regulation. Under Part 5, it says license issued to a qualified as an authorized person shall not be transferred. It's non-transferable and may not be assigned to any other party. That's correct. So the process for any transfer. So there are reapplication and yeah. reconsideration. Yeah. Um, company can be so. That's that's yes. a lot. Company is yeah. trans. Yeah. yeah. Whatever that can be done under the company's, company's law act, yeah. is permitted. Yeah, yeah. They can sell shares. Yeah. yeah. Like a strange entity cannot come, but the same entity can operate as per the the, the laws of the country. Yes. Yeah. And again, sir, then they will have to again give the ten shareholders, chief shareholders, their names will also have to be. Discussed. They have to amend. Yeah. Yeah. But it's permitted, as you correctly yeah. said, yes. Why did we use three months prior to uh, uh, making an application under Regulation 26? Was there any reason for that? Including in the gasset. What, what is the three months what, that's in the gasset? 26? An authorized person shall not be entitled to make an application under this regulation if at any time in the previous three months the authorized person has A changed its name, traded or otherwise carried on business, engaged in other activity other than those unnecessary, blah blah blah. What is why is that three months? Is there a reason for that? Or? So that that came in from the DIFC regulations. So we don't want to see if there's a company established, right? A new entity established to come in and apply for authorized person license, right? We would like to ensure that has some history, and it's not like a shell company created and immediately shareholders are changed. So that sort of comes in from a KYC and and and, uh, and a due diligence perspective. So in the original application, you don't call for like three years of existence or anything like that. Any startup can register. Yeah. Yes, that's so correct. Why, why is the three months here then? What, what difference does it make? If a startup can apply, why do you want to have uh, 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 this three months clause? Change its name. Yeah. Yeah. Change. So if, if a startup is there, it's a startup. But then the question was, okay, a startup comes in today. In one month's time, they change the name, right? Yes, we understand you can go and create another legal entity with that new name, right? So this is to do some checks and balances as to why those names are changed within such a short period. But then you were just, we were just told that you can do whatever you want within the Companies Act. In the Companies Act, you can change the name, change the directors, change any anything time. you want. So why is that? Why are you discriminating a company like that? W we can again. This came in from the studies that were done on the duty, in, in, but it can be looked at, and your your concerns are noted, and we can go back to advisors and and have a look at it and and see the validity of it. Point. Yeah. You're saying startup, you come and then you are asking three months. No, three uh, month period. Yeah. yeah. So just look into that and see sure, that will, you know yeah, it, it is fair to every every. Corporate entity and does not cause unnecessary hindrances. Yes. Yeah. Um, Twenty-six. Is there a standard document to be filed for any person that may have caused to ensure the license is not cancelled? Uh, what does that mean? That means you apply to you can't just um, take away the license. Is that what the po point is here? Stand. Yeah, as I understand. This is very clear at the beginning of the application itself. Once the license is granted, the renewal of the license, ownership is largely on the investor. But we proactively send, we agreed yes. to send messages to them by the 10th month and say, you are due to apply now. So they prepare and bring. If they don't do that by the, let's say, one year and two, two weeks, for some reason, power cuts or some reason, they can't give a grace period, then they are willfully not applying. 
well i mean that is not specified in this ekata mai ekata regulations i mean you have to be clear no yeah. i mean that's all i Otherwise, think the point is very yeah. so we'll move to the next one surcharges and fines in the event of an offence under this act the commission will determine whether to initiate legal proceedings or in lieu of proceedings with legal the authorized person may be fined an amount the commission may think fit right so the question is should the surcharge and penalty amounts be specified rather than being at the discretion of the commission no, no. if a party involved in business wants to lodge a complaint against the authorized person and requires legal action to be taken will this also be decided by the commission so uh, actually these regulations are being drafted now the surcharges and penalties it will be coming so don't you need those in the, 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 in the, you know approved yeah, you to, now you have to have a time frame now and get it done no yes. otherwise yeah we are we are ah, okay for commission these regulations no no what i'm saying is here you are talking about penalties right now your what you are saying is you are drafting the regulations on what the penalties mm -hmm. are so if an investor a serious investor is looking into coming in he or she might want to know what those penalties are in fact to have certainty isn't it yes sir yes, when can you all so what is the target date uh, so all the regulations would complete by quarter 1 and quarter 2 what quarter 2 that is may no, no not these the, are the, these are, are <laughs> ag office is, one, is aware yeah. that uh, they are asking your opinion no not yeah. quarter 2 as in the other there are about 24 regulations to be published okay. so these were the priority so are they at the ag consultation level or at your legal department yes. where are they in the process it's final stage of positive we have ag office no and then legal to the legal draft draftment and then goes to the gesser yes yeah, so that, that how long we know the normal process of this no it it may take even 2 years if you go by the way. because ag office is bundled i mean redundant with so many other things so priority basis ekada deadline nak denna mekata ne natha therumak nae chairman kiyana ekak athata dan ek nae ek apply karanna giyanan eya ahanawa mam okkari varadak lana penalty ekotu ne thiyenne ekata eka nattam Uh, I'll, I'll submit you the the status report of these all these regulations. Okay. We have okay. actually gone through everything. Yeah. So first by first quarter, all the necessary regulations, okay. other than okay. to uh, uh, management of the city. Yeah. Management of the city. There are few set of regulations, but yeah. there's nothing to manage at the moment. Those uh, regulations right. will be delayed. Right. But the rest of it will come before first quarter. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Let's Chai, go to the next. Just a yeah. Uh, couple to that. now let's say penalty is in contested you are imposing 50000 dollar or whatever 100000 dollar it's been contested which court does hear this uh, so sir under the act uh, port city matters are held on a priority basis to a, in a dedicated court that is already provided in the act so we are in discussion with the minister of justice to have a court dedicated to hear So, so parallelly there are lot of things happening no yes. otherwise yeah, one sir, one yeah. wheel stop means the whole mission can stop yeah, so it's being fast tracked so we will have a magistrate court so i can uh, Haru, uh, you Haru. know the thing here uh, uh, honorable member is the um, will there be international sort of jurisdiction on this so okay, okay, right okay, right okay, okay. now if you look at dubai you know dubai has a certain legal structure but difc is not subjected to those dubai laws mm. yeah. so i think it is british e english law english that law applies london commercial courts right. yeah complete uh, uh, so you this know, was they are in the Uh, so this was the in the original act but when it goes through the process most of the the, the conditions related to this was i mean take that's a, a yeah. i mean hypothetically yeah. Yeah. touch wood bad And luck we should not come upon us a investor who is saying no i will not pay you come to london commercial court and meet me what are we going to we don't have to make again me kalinu mama question ek unmatu kara me vijaydas rajwaksha matuma ate etukota danta me wage prashna sambandha visadanna commercial high court ekak dala danna trial 10 10ak yana etukota ekama apita ease of doing business la negative point ekak vela diyena ोर्ट मेक निशा 
బ్యాడ్ అట్రాక్షన్ గా కూడా తిన్నా మేము ఇది ఇంటర్నేషనల్ ఆర్బిట్రేషన్ ఏకత్ అంట డిసాల్వ్ కల్లా కథా మేటర్ comes to court then that has to be taken up first is it appears to be so in it says priority shall be given by courts in relation to that e e hema gramayak ne e gen cases file karne vidiyar ne ne namuth ekata mantra meta metra kiyena e gollu me me neethe yata te vishesha vara prasadaya denna kela pramukha ta kara e hema karanna ba ehema wenna e gen nisa dedicated court ekak courts mona hari ideally ideally tamai karanna kela suggest kare meka api mena lukuta katha kara me mata eka gena ekedi department ekena kawara sambandha una e gena ehema nathuwa den ite passe me lawyers la kawuru kemathi wenna me cases file karanna date ekata file in vidiyarne cases ahanne no even when we suggested that as it is a day to day basis lawyers are not the private bar is not agreeable hmm. not just with yeah. this this prioritizing laws, this but generally day to day trials are not uh, then the best thing is you to have your special courts maybe court. inside the court, court. Yes. you know that is the ideal situation but to go but then we yeah. go into this no issue point of waste of time people are not coming 3 4 that was what we were trying to avoid uh, try to explain to court because otherwise we would have had to go for a referendum if someone argued that this judicial power is going to be restricted of the ඔන්න මෙතන ගරුම අන්තිතුමා අපි සජෙෂන් එකක් දාලා වෙනම අපි කන්සල්ට් එකක් ඔබතුමා කමිටි එකෙන් අපිට එකක් එවන්නකෝ දැන් මොකද මං හිතන්නේ මෙතන තියෙන එක වැදගත් කාරණාවක් තමයි ජාත්‍යන්තර ආයෝජකයෙක්ට විශ්වාසයක් තියෙන ඕනේ නීතිය සාධාරණව ක්‍රියාත්මක වෙනවා කියලා ඉතින් ඒ නිසා තමයි ඩුබායි වාගේ රටවල් ඒ මේ 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 ඉංග්‍රීසි බ්‍රිටිෂ් ලෝයර් කියටතේ ක්‍රියාත්මක දී ලංකාවේ මේක කරන්න බෑ ඔබතුමා දැන් බලන කලම්බු ඩිස්ට්‍රික්ට් කෝට් අද මේ මොහොතේ ඉන්වෙස්ටර්ස් ලා බිස්නස් මන් ලා කීදෙනෙක් ඉන්නද කලම්බු ඩිස්ට්‍රික්ට් කෝට්ස් වල මේ වෙන විට අද අද දවසේ ඉතින් ඒක ලොකු බෑග් බෑග් ට්‍රැක්ස් ආ මීන් වාට් ඔන්ටර්බල් මෙම්බර් ඉස් රේසින් ඉස් අ වෙරි ඉම්පෝර්ටන්ට් මැටර් සෝ ඇයි තින්ක් යු නෝ යු බෙටර් වී විල් මොනිටර් යුවර් ප්‍රෝග්‍රස් සෝ නෙක්ස්ට් ටයිම් යු කම් ෆෝ රෙගියුලේෂන්ස් යු බෙටර් ටෙල් අස් ඉෆ් දෙයි ඉස් එනි බෙටර් and propose but uh, government uh, yeah, yeah we can propose sir. yeah take take case studies right. from countries which are very close to sri lanka singapore is a city city state and it has its own culture and all that if you take that it has never had strong trade unions but this country we have yeah, already yeah. he being a liberal economist he is worried about the market competition you know what it mean he is concerned about it no, because social, the nature of i am a social market economist <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> so, so just just i want just one minute me so there are two things i believe in you know one is market liberalism right we will have wait 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 wait, okay, wait, 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 wait. Let, since you made the comment that is you know individual freedoms markets competition other one is political liberalism which is social equity and justice so if you want to develop this country both these things have to come together so that's the way i look at things thank you very much chairman. so chairman. we have to move on we have to yeah. move on chairman, chairman just 
just one moment just one moment yes yeah. honorable yeah. member chairman i'm so happy that you have learned something from yesterday's uh, i i i i explained that to the, those people yesterday yes yeah, just one point we have also approached the international chamber of commerce to see whether we could get them to set up a branch in colombo so that some of these disputes can be resolved through Hello. them because it's Hello. much more effective no i mean faster. The, so alternate dispute resolution is something that and we don't need to you know yeah we know the importance of that right so there has to be confidence in the legal system that's all no as long as that's there then it's okay so shall we move to the, those are all the questions specific questions that we have done the regulations in that gazette there is a second gazette we have one or two questions one question and the second gazette is on the fees right the gaza provides uh, regulations for registering and licensing fees for persons authorized to conduct business in the port city types of fees application fee $2500 alteration of information submitted $100 annual fee $2000 fees for extracts $100 the question is how do these fees compare with fees taken by accs in other countries are these rates comparative refer to section 3 so we have looked at some uh, looked at some uh, others uh, where i can't find section 3 uh, application instructions state that until the electronic system is made available application and supporting documents have to be submitted manual how long will it take for electronic system to be made available this will directly affect ease of doing business will information be digitized on the centralized on a centralized information system so Yes, please. Yeah. So on the point of the fees, uh, chairman and other members, uh, again we come down to the benchmark jurisdictions, right? Uh, when you look at DIFC and uh, DMCC, which is your rightly pointed out earlier, is these are the key zones we need to look at. Uh, the uh, these fees uh, they initially charge uh, about approximately two hundred dollars for name reservation, as we call it there, and then the company incorporation and licensing fees. would range from anywhere between $1700 in the case of DIFC to about $8000 US dollars in uh, DM uh, Dubai Multi Commodity Exchange it can go average approximately $12000 right uh, we have uh, strategically priced a point lower than that uh, with the interest of uh, understanding and being aware that DIFC and DMCC are institutions or special economic zones that have been in pr in in operation for nearly two decades now right and they are sort of what we would call mature markets or mature zones so we have sort of priced ourselves slightly lower than that i've also known uh, your scheduled three talks about certain countries bangladesh india indonesia uh, etc oman as well mm. i've just quickly glanced at that and uh, we would compare the the benchmark jurisdictions of mauritius and singapore uh, were the other two benchmark jurisdictions and yes i think uh, some members are looking at the presentation uh, these there is a slide on this uh, these countries of course they sort of range from about 200 dollars upwards for setting up a company and registering a company um our 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 fees of uh, two and a half thousand dollars is slightly higher than that but as uh, the chairman mentioned those are countries as opposed to special economic zones and that's why our fee point is slightly higher than that uh, it's just a question i mean if you look no, at I it think and you are satisfied uh, they looked at return and then our you all can share your findings no our they research team they, were, they got they it so you can also i i don't know i i normally four, four. go by the independent indicators who award internationally what are the best ports so if you look at them last 5 years what they have done and what they have omitted we have a learning curve there i think it is published already if you don't want to pay now one thing yeah. i just want to clarify myself here now the commission's initial operational fund the 400 million or whatever the number was supposed to be set aside but then we didn't have money the project company advanced that to you all yeah. and yeah. then you all repaid it yeah, according to the act yes. project com at itself define the in initial investment value by That's the right. project yeah. company yeah. and it okay. says uh, they can deduct everything before they pay the rest of it right right so it's uh, so that is what we yeah. did so, so now let's say we are we are taking off where will you get your money if there are no application whatsoever i know you all of you all are working voluntarily 
Thank you very much. In a, in a situation where a country is experiencing extreme migration, you all are staying back because you have interest and in, to develop this country. Thank you. But then you can't do charity every day. What is the alternative method? Other than borrowing from a local bank or going after the treasury, how will you survive? Uh, we actually What's your, your plan? We actually have uh, two other models as well. So we, okay. there's a duty free to come in. So okay. uh, and there you you get uh, a top line revenue, right. not uh, not bottom line. It's a top line revenue. Right. Uh, so for the, at the moment also we have certain applications uh, to be processed. So and there are few investment also to be happen. So I think uh, for this year we have money to operate uh, uh, throughout the yeah. year. So within this because year, you, you work voluntarily for your remuneration, but you had to drive your car, you had to yeah. have a rent and a don't place. Give, we don't take anything <laughs> at the moment. But then buyer you will we we were looking for a um, uh, sort of a input from the AGS department earlier. Is um, now the the ownership of the commission is with the the with the the state. Right? This is fully so. This so in terms of the. Um, interpretation of a body corporate according to the constitution right the so the colombo port city commission is a corporate body owned 100 percent by who the the, the sovereign sovereign government that that is what it is yeah so so there are no other shareholders of the, of this it's completely owned No, why is it partly? This is a fully state-owned entity. Fully, fully, fully. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. In volunteer, करना नहीं. अरे क्लास से कती है ना तुनाई विस. मैं क्या नहीं. ये तो कोई उगलांग उगलांग गाना तीरा ना वो एक पास से किन्हें किया ना पुलवां द एजी ऑफिस. अपने वॉलेंटियर वैध कले में तो ना अपने पेट्रोल गाह के ना में वैध कले एक निशा में वैध दिवाल तक किसी दिन का टापी बात किया नहीं किया नहीं किया नहीं किया नहीं यू कैन्ट से यू कैन्ट से दैट चाप उड़ा का सो सो दो सारे टू स्पेसिफिक सेट्स ऑफ क्वेश्चंस वी हैड देन वी हैव सम अदर जेंडर क्वेश्चंस a clause four of the act. Uh, before yeah. we go to that, section uh, two four. Uh, the commission shall be responsible to facilitate, prepare, develop, amend, update, publish, and enforce all community rules. Within. Yes. Within yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, have you done that? Uh, we have actually prepared the community declaration. So, uh, now it's at the final stage. We'll declare that uh, maybe th that goes to the second quarter, sir. Mm. Second quarter. So, what happens? An investor and his family and all those who live within will sign a charter. Yeah. And they yes. will be um, uh, abide by uh, that set yes. of charter. Okay. Yes. <laughs> then, um, the commission shall submit to the president uh, or in the event subject minister an annual progress report setting out the progress on the implementation of the master plan. Now the question is, have you done that for last year? Sir, uh, first six months we have done. Uh, then now uh, we've completed the second one year. Uh, so we'll submit it. Uh, now we are preparing it. submit oh, first six months we had and anyway we all, every every month we update it. Hmm. So we have that report with us. Uh, Dr. Priyat, uh, there I would like to see what I have seen in our parliament. Some state-owned bodies are giving their annual report after five years. We don't want to do that. Yeah, so you are right now okay. But when you get busy and then there are documents that are pending from other departments and other bodies, you will say. So therefore, I would say you, you also bring for your own internal discipline that within the second quarter of the following year, you will submit this. By law, you are then you can, no down operation, you can... So, push that. Uh, actually, we, we, we have a chronological order from day one. Every month we update. Right. So the activities we do, so then we can extract easily from that time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. So I in can six, share that even if you want. 661G, six, 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 
मे प्रश विसर उतरा लेने एक ऑनलाइन एक एप्लीकेशन दोन के ऑनलाइन डॉक्यूमेंट हाथी बार दिन नोन के एक हाउ लॉन्ग विल द कमीशन हाउ विल द कमीशन एक्ट एस ए सिंगल विंडो फेसिलिटेट थ्रू एन ऑनलाइन पर्सन हेव द डेवलप अ सिस्टम द सिस्टम आर्काइव द इनफॉर्मेशन एप्लीकेशन पर्पज ऑफ डिजिटल रिकॉर्ड कीपिंग एंड फॉर रेफरेंस पर्पजेस द सिस्टम एक्चुअली इज रेडी सर Uh, i think if you uh, uh, i think you got the link we have not published it because of certain uh, we need to get yeah. the approval for the forms and all to go ahead with uh, the dynamics statics it's all now okay. up dynamics we will push in after we get the clearance that the make and may regular city ka ada metening approve no thing kelima parliament wala gihilla ilanga kalima dawase eka me sammata unaim passe etakota eka me neethi anukula wenawa even sir today we can lock down so show you uh, we can launch it then it got ahena go statically yeah. technically can launch karna because ka uh, we cannot launch we hari. have already launched the st- uh, hari uh, hari uh, hari හේතුව මම වැරදි අදහසක් සමාජගත වෙලා තියෙනවා ඔයගොල්ලන් වෙබ්සයිට් එකක් මේක නෝ ඉට්ස් ඕල්රෙඩි සින්ස් ලාස්ට් ඉයර් අපි දන්නවා ඒක ඔව් යු ආර් ඩුයිං යුවර් ගුඩ් ජොබ් නමුත් ඒක ගැන කියන්න ඒකට හේතුව අද මේ ට්‍රැඩිෂනල් මීඩියා වලින් එහාට ගිහිල්ලනේ මේ සමහර කාරණා පිළිබඳ වැරදි පතුරන්නේ so at least uh, you communicate in such a way that everything is ready that you are waiting for a right time then mehema me mehema i i was confess because i was at the last meeting and i attend to this commission throughout this committee last time when we sat here see, maybe since you two were not here the information that was coming were erroneous true so therefore our response was also not friendly to you all because we went on the data that we got i must confess that we are not enemies to you neither we are relatives to you so let us do a professional job that sure, is my sir. plea all sure. the time thank you har ilang ekata anna uh haya haya j what is the capacity of expertise of the commission to develop and approve environmental standards and execute environmental improvements develop and approve environmental standards sir, we have a consultant who's capable of doing that we don't do anything sir we take all consultants with uh, the capability idi okata dang environmental standard hadana rajay environment ca ek thiyena neda ca me meke law ek hatiyata sir meke ata vatenne coast conservation department sir because we are within that uh, zone idi so ai idi coast conservation ekat ek wada karanna bari sir we wanted to have sir international standard level sustainable policy so that is why we work with the consultant Thought so shouldn't you we also will definitely we need to submit after that to the no, no, man gane cost cost converse, conservation ne ka sambandha kala gata yutu nadd definitely sir after we prepare that we'll submit it to them and we'll work together with them sir right okay. then 6a double a apada uh, kena 6m garu sawa thuma da etena podi gatuluwa kapi identify kara den wage freelance consultant la ganna kota me aandu it's not freelance it's paid na hari hari ආණ්ඩුවේ ආයතන ලොකු ඊගෝ බැටල් එකක් කරනවා ඊළඟ මේක හොඳ නැහැ අරක හොඳ නැහැ කියලා ඊළඟ පත්තර වල දානවා මෙහෙම ඒක සල්ලි කෝටි ගානක් ගියවල අපේ මෙච්චර ඒක නිසා ඒ ඒ ඒ තියෙන ගැප් එකක් ෆිල් කරගන්න වෙනවා මොකද නැත්තම් අපි ඉඩෙන්ටිෆයි කරන ලොකුම ප්‍රශ්නය තමයි ඊගෝ එක දැන් මන්ත්‍රීතුමා අපි ඇත්තටම කෝස් කන්සර්වේෂන් ඩිපාර්ට්මන්ට් එකත් එක්ක සෙෂන් කීපයක්ම තිබ්බා දැන් විල් බී ද බොටල් නෙක් අපි ඊගොල්ලෝත් එක්ක සෙෂන් කීපයක්ම තිබ්බා අපි නිලධාරින් අප්ඩේට් කරලා මේ අපහාස ගන්න ඕනේ अब ये गोलो पीली कांड क्या मतलब इन्हें आर दिन है दानुम है इतने कैसा ये वाव समान लाता मास का नंग साह को विश्वविद्यालय साह कुलक फिर आदि नहीं एक ना क्या मतलब है मरुद्वे एक ना किन्हें कहाँ नहीं कोमत मैं को ऑफ कर दान मैं को बाला नहीं दे मैं आरा का ऑफ कर दान तो मैं इलागर एम टू कू regulators and other bodies institutions organizations and persons for the achievement of its objectives and the exercise performance and discharge of its powers duties and functions etakota me enter into agreements with uh, international finance and business centers other bodies kiwa hama organizations it can you enter into agreements with foreign organizations what what do you mean by that and mukadde ke arthaya mukadde may i yeah yeah you can yes 
Uh, so, Chairman, sir, this is when you're, you you see in the space of special economic zones, you would have one special economic zone entering into a memorandum of understanding with another inter uh, international zone. So, for knowledge sharing purposes, to sharing best practices, etc. Because if you read section and you're on uh, M, am I correct? Yes. Yeah. So, it looks at and persons for the achievement of its objectives and exercise performance. So, up make a make a catch all phrase, institutions, organizations, and persons. Kiwahama. Siulumadena, Tavarajake Karen, owner can a cake agreement to Kakahan, whether Rate and Nithia Samaga, okay, Gatuma, Keno, the Kinaka, up to the Nagando. I think, but the, 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 yeah, the, yes. So that that's how the commission looks at it. No, no, make a MOU. Yeah. You never make an agreement. Shall we ask? Um, uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. This M. Yeah. Yeah. Subjected to AG officers vetting. Six M. Odd. It's not something that captured the scrutiny of the court. But uh, if you apply the sort of the use gem generis rule, it's all financial business centers, regulators, then other bodies means those in that sort of framework, exactly. you, you write it, right? It relates to them. But yes, if we all are going to enter into an agreement, necessarily it will have to come to the Attorney General's department. You you have already a legal person. Yeah, yeah, we, or, have, we have. We have, have no? so legal. They send the draft to AG yeah. office and get an opinion. Right. That is contradictory. Then 6A, double A, Arakama extension on the, the, the report, annual report, an annual report on the operations, income and expenditure of the commission to be placed before parliament. That definitely yes, sir, will, will come, sir. Then oh, now we the sent it to the... So, uh, we see the mass of high eyes, sir. No, no, we see a varshet, parliament to the Idripat Karad Okulonke may act at Anua, Mudal Vartava Saha, Adam Havi Adam Vartava. Commission again. No, no, we see a cow root. Ah, Aka, I have a way. Then Aka, I will call a Q1. We see a cow root that I may audit the Katam. You are an Akila. Yes, we, we finished the audit and we have sent the uh, audited accounts to the uh, relevant ministry. The Aka and Ogolonta, Aka, the Gata Prasne, Master Dahatunati say audit the Givana Akila. The Ogolo Prasna got a Q1. BDO the Mokadeka, Ayatane, Eka Karena Akila. Then Api Aka Sababatu to my end of Q1. The heavy line on a major bank is above to my video case above to my damn prasna. You are yeah, so it has been audited and signed off also. Now that we said for the president, has the ministry. I mean, chapters and lessons learned. Why did it get delayed so much? Actually, can I? Uh, I am the auditor yeah. uh, yes. now. What happened? We were appointed somewhere in uh, March. And there were a lot of clarifications that both parties have been asking, especially from the Institute of Chartered Accountants also, which took about four months at least, because the land ownership and things like that. And in the meantime, my firm has been in constant touch with the Auditor General's Department, uh, Deputy Auditor General called one Mr. Vimal Ratna. It took a little longer time, but anyway, now we have, we, we, from our side, there was no delay at all. So that we finalized, and then uh, we, we submitted uh, whenever because we were supposed to have the final accounts for us to do a perfect audit. Now, one thing is, if you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know what you're talking about. 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 Mr. Chairman, if I can respond. Mr. Mewla. Mr. Mewla, what you're talking about. The delay was because of how to treat land. Now that problem has been solved with the 21st year audit for 22 December year end audit. I don't believe we'll have any delay at all. We can even give the accounts. My request to the team is that by a four months after the year end, the audit account will be done and dusted. So tell us, we are parliament, right? You are supposed to submit this to us. Yeah. What was the issue with the land? No, yeah, there is a complication if I if you give me a minute to explain. Yes, please. There is a land which has been reclaimed by a project company and given to the government free of charge and the government has vested that with the commission. And then in, the commi in, in that land there is certain plots, 44 plots, which has been given 
on a 99 year lease arrangement to enable the project committee to monetize that. So the question was at what value do you account for the land in the books because now that the government has vested the land in the commission it has to sit in the commission books. The project company has spent as of December 2021 1 billion rupees now it's no, gone up to 1.2 1 right 1 billion dollars sorry 1 billion dollars now it's gone to 1.2 but as of december 1 billion the question was what figure do we put into the commission books and give credit to the government for the amount of 1 billion yeah now the question was because 44 plots were were assigned to the project company to monetize what what's spent, the extent of the 44 plots uh, 116 hectares. 116, 116, 116, 116, 116 hectares. Hectares. So, hectares. So therefore, under IFRS, we took the right of benefit that they can get. We eliminated that and took the balance portion, which was some 63% value, mm. to the books of commission. commission. So commission officially can monetize from its own plots that it has uh, mm. that balance part because the 44 plots, monetization will go, or the economic benefits will go to the project Com company. So that was the confusion. When they wrote to the institute, the institute said, look, you know, this is, it has to be commission has to take a decision. Yeah. So when I got involved in the commission, then after that, I sat with them, and we went through, we had a meeting with the auditors, BDO as well, and we came clear, clarified, and now we have cleared that problem. That problem shouldn't arise anymore. All which will happen in 2022 is that $1 billion and $59 now will go to $1.2 billion because now they spent another $150 billion. million. So that will be all that is done because the accounting is now clear. There is no more uh, clarity to be obtained. And the AG also has accepted the treatment. So the, the I don't see any delay in the 22 accounts. I am confident that within four months we should be able to give the accounts audited to the minister. Hari, then, if you want to make a prasne thiye ne khaling sadhang una make a aramba ka pragda ne kyanne rajya ta aithi sampurna me idam 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 me vati na kama kiya. Yes. Then, how to make you a aking siyata hectare desi hatta ting hectare ekasi dasya ekasi desi hatta na me ekasi dasya own to monetize karana pulwang kiya. That's right. Eka ni sinak karoppo te vikunan na pulwang dame. Bad. Bad. Aru dhanu na mehta. Aru dhanu na. Lease. They have a master lease for 99 years, sir. So they can lease. Renew the lease. Then then apu hito wo meke buildi mak khedu agel apartment te ka. Oh. The apartment te ka freehold lease, freehold vikunan na pulwang dame. Sir, what happens if a different investor comes in? The, the primary investor has to uh, uh, give that lease back to us, then we'll sign a new lease with the new investor. So if it is an apartment, they can, it's uh, according to the current law. 99 years. 99 years. From so the it's current like signature Dubai's, date. It's like in Dubai, so it's according apartment. to the current law, sir. Yeah. Condominium law applies here, sir. Har, condominium har, har, law. Have I the methodology in a condominium law I can apply when a matter than with the Pudgalika Idaman? No, sir. Then they make a Raja Idamak, then they keep with them a CDC, a Raja Taiti name, Akar Hector, they say at an ame. So this uh, this law applies to UDA lands as well. Okay. When UDA leases it to someone else, okay. they can build an apartment hey, and sell. Then they have to pay the sir the value I, of the uh, outright. So then me I the yam kisi adui makti ano ada. Then atang ek ek vidhir ma pawati ano ada. Di katam me ka anu na me wasar ka ta lease ka di puni sa. Lease giot sir. Kuma lease wali ni ano ha by apartment giot sir. According to the current law, you can get the ownership. Capital uh, and let's say that somebody builds an apartment under UDA law, you do it. What we have done is some of the land will go out and then we get revenue that has come in and the surplus will go into reserves. So it's it's the asset getting converted into revenues and going to reserve in the balance sheet. Hmm. So, and as a, uh, we also did one more check under IFRS. Uh, we saw what was the value of the land because we had to do an impairment test. 
the valuation that we have got for our portion is 2.6 million dollars so there is no need to impair so it is we have we have put it at 2.6 million billion mm. that is the value because we had to do an impairment test assessment to see yeah. whether the whether the value we are putting the books is adequate mm. our value is much lower than what the market value is so at any time we can always revalue the land at any time so 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 what is the market value of the 269 uh, hectares uh, mr muller if you according take, to this yeah. about 4 billion it's about 4 billion 4 billion according to this that is the value if you take the what we did the valuation of the two so 4 billion portion. okay 4 billion so i am just asking a question because i do not yeah. know what is the value of this land as it now stands if you take market value 4 billion okay. but without, without any buildings just yeah. the land yeah, without just buildings the without buildings 4 billion 4 billion dollars but accounting dollars. we use the cost convention so we only edora purchase ka kiya vaate ne oh we have to divide get divide by purchase ka balan kiya vaate ne because part of the land uh, chairman is for the government owned also includes parks and you know mm. the common things yeah. so non commercial they, they are non commercial not marketable land. so see, for the government has i think 27 plots which are marketable the the 28 plots 28 plots government can sell and the city has 44 they they are member पाक तीन कोटर में क्या आगे वैडी बनो आने को पाक नेतांग आगे आडू बनो आने को हरे ये तो कोटर मारे ये तो कोटर एवरेज का मुखाक करे वो कोटर जस्ट कराने बुलवाने को यस ना रफ्ली की ये देने ओगा हार दाहा रुपया डॉलर हार दाहा फोर थाउजेंड डॉलर्स पर स्क्वायर मीटर लाइक तुम से हत्या है वाली कला purchases i have a calculator okay i'll do the calculation for the accountant come and let's give us i'll do the calculation <laughs> we'll see what it is yeah 4 4 4 divided by 100 and i think by estimates for 20 million ready 6 golden mile lake प्रश्न गोलडन मैल वटना මේ ඇතුලේ තියෙන ඉඩමේ වටිනාකම වැඩිද අඩුද කියන තමයි මේ අහන්නේ. හැබැයි මේ සර් අරන් තියෙන්නේ පබ්ලික් ඒරියාසුත් එක්කම අරගෙන වැලි වල. ඒ කියන්නේ සාමාන්‍ය පිට කොටුවේ පර්ච් එකක් කීයද? ආ ඒක තමයි අහන්නේ ගෝල්ඩන් මයිල් එකේ කොටුවේ 20 මිලියන්. නෑ ඊට වැඩි ඇති. සර් 2025 සර්. ආ 25 මිලියන් කියමු. කොටුවේ පර්ච් එකක් 25 මිලියන් මෙතන 13 මිලියන්. 13.7. සියට පහස ඩිස්කවුන්ට් එකක් තියෙනවා. Have I? You know, this is average, but when it comes to yeah, actual yeah, lot, uh, it's about thirty lakh, twenty-five thirty. The then, then Lanka we own a putgali at Lanka we purvasi at make it idang karna pulwa. Pulwa sir, rupee valing karna pulwa. Rupee valing karna pulwa. Pulwa. Only for the land purchase they can sell. Dollar valing. Na ma na mama kya ne me mata karna ne me mama han ne mama kohe karna the me hua. Hari me mama han ne to kotha. Then we ki investment ka kya the original investment ka? One point four billion dollars. 1.4 billion dollars tamai dan 4 billion dollars vela thiyen yes e okkoma investment eka kare china ha china ba apita vela thiyenne invest engineering corporation yes sir etakota uh, eken tamai ogollo me ogollo onta eka dunnata aanduwata dunnara commission ekata denawanne 140 ganne yes sir ewa ogollo lease karala eken me rental income ekak ganna oh sir etakota me port city company eta मैं 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 का मैं इन्वेस्टमेंट का गोड़ा प्रॉफिटेबल द मंगी था नहीं सर नाउ इट्स प्रॉफिटेबल बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ द लैंड प्राइसेस हैस जकाप नो नाउ इट्स इट्स प्रॉफिटेबल सर एंड देंगे तो गोड़े एक और लो में के इन ताऊ दोटा ती इन्वेस्टमेंट्स करना होता है एक और लो एग्री वेला ती है ना सर कर
required at the election expenditure bill uh, meeting with the minister. But please go ahead. If I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, make sure that the elections don't get postponed because of that. <laughs> <laughs> we want to have the elections next month. Just uh, before I go on that, uh, the penalties, uh, Regulation 31, we, uh, somebody had raised a question about the commission having the discretion to yes. uh, set the fee. So I think, no, it says may think proper in composition of the offence, 31, but I was heard to say, there was somebody was heard to say that regulations are being made in that effect. So then this regulation should cross refer that instead of saying. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 we refer that, yeah. This has to change, that, that's what I, I just wanted to make a note of that. It says commission may think proper in composition of the offence, but must say but commission has decided in terms of that regulation. That, right. That's, that's all I want to say. Okay, Thanks. noted. Uh, uh, then, um, this thing about um, uh, FA and GA, manage the fund of the commission, make investments, operate, maintain bank accounts, etc., and to approve and manage an annual budget for the commission. So that you all are doing. That we have done. Sir. So we have a budget and that's yes. how you operate. Yes. Then GA, to regulate gaming activities within the area of authority of the Colombo Port City and we are required to make regulations for the management of such activities. Sir, we have done the draft. We are going through it, sir. sir. What? Uh, Gaming. What do you Then, I you have a port city, a casino, a regulation. What do you think about that? draft. Why don't you talk about how it is done? What do you think about that? 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 What do you think Godabi me me casino regulate karana regulate kene natua license denne kela me committee wen illuwa api eka dunne naha awasane di api ekanga una mudala mathyanse ekanga una me avuruddhe september maase 30 wenda wenakota casino niyamana commission wa sthapanaya karala kriyaatmaka karana kiyala एक मॉनिटर कराना अनुकामित वक्त पद कर लाती है ना दैनिक टमाट मगर ने मैं आधा एक आधा साल का चक्र नहीं रहे ने साथी ये डे पोस्टपोन वेला आती है ना मैं कोचर दूर टा एक इस राह के हिला ती है ना आदि के ला ये तो कोट लंका वे कसीनो नियामने कराने का नीतिया कुद ओगोलोंगे कसीनो नियामने कराने ओगोलो draft regulation we've got from uh, US and this is what we are trying to do is to localize to the Sri Lankan law that is what is presently being done and is no, that's not a acceptable answer no then ogollo taniyen gihila regulatory regulator kene khada and bane khau de to regulate oy commission ne kada casino regulate karan Act we can't delegate our authority, sir. No, 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 no. Act again, then commission. That them mataki anna go khau the presidents can ne. Then api hita mu them mang ekate na ma. Then khau ruhari license ka kila na offshore banking license ka kila na. Sir, sir. Potaki na, potaki na. Me adaksh general tu ma. Eto kote khau ruhari offshore banking license ka kilo thing. Ogollo single window ke atate ek bar ganna. Bar ana ke na tika kala king in principle approve laga deno. Habai offshore banking regulate karna maha bank kuye. Uh, regulatory board. department ka tiye no. Ita kotha matam ek ahanati bichha tau karna wat tamai concurrence slash uh, uh, approval. Emane tiye decision ke la me gasat tege tiye no. Ita na prasnya tiye no. Ek yaan ne khaud mooli ka niyamane karan ne mooli ka wa me offshore banking. Obatumada 
Emat datta ma banku. Revan answer that. So the the rules for banking and banking specifically under Part Eight of this Act are not yet drafted. We have shared drafts with the Central Bank, the Monetary Board, and they are being discussed on how to do the regulatory framework and how to do the monitoring of the financial institutions. Emat nang apit avila ki ande pa o kollo me casino regulator ka khada no akila. मुकदेन से Uh, in the event, Homa Homa Gihila, together with a letter of approval in principle and terms of regulation 5 of the relevant regulatory authority for its concurrence slash decision. So, it's an a me get a look at you know, a kyan ne concurrence kyan ne mata teer na vidyat na mama teer na ag ganna wa ita pasi mama sababu tuma ag ang ahan wa ah obo tuma ag ang gade kyan. मेतन द प्रश्ने पैन नागिनोलेटर ඕගොල්ලෝගේ ප්‍රයිමරි ජොබ් එක කැසිනෝ රෙගියුලේට් කරන්න ගන්නේ මේ නේ ඔය නමුත් ඒ වුණාට සර් පනතේ දීලා තියෙන්නේ එහෙමයි සර් නෑ පනතේ තියෙන දැනට මේ ලංකාවේ තියෙන කැසිනෝ එකක්වත් රෙගියුලේට් වෙන්නේ නෑ නේ අද ලංකාවේ මේ බෙටින් ඇන් රෙග් ගේමින් රෙගියුලේෂන් එක තියෙනවා ඒව නෑ නේ කෝ කොහොත් තියෙන පෙන්නන්න ස්කෙඩියුල් ටු නෑ නෑ මට කියන්න කෝ ගේමින් ඇන් බෙටින් රෙගියුලේෂන් කෝ රෙගියුලේටර් කෙනෙක් කෝ ලංකාවේ ඒක තමයි කියන්නේ रेगुलेटर के निकलना तो रेगुलेट करना नहीं बैन ही इधर उड़ो मैं ओ गोल लो महेमा है वो बतूमा मेक लेकिन तुम्हारे मेक सीरियस मैटर है का हरी एक तो कड़े ओ गोल लोग मेक बार करने वाले क्या ने महाबार दूर कार या इधर कड़े कमिशन मेंबर्स लाट ये ना वाला रेगुलेट कराने सांपूर्ण एम कॉन्करेंस क ඕගොල්ලෝ රෙගියුලේෂන් හැදුවොත් ආණ්ඩුව රෙගියුලේෂන් හදන්න කලින් කොන්කරන්ස් කෙනෙක් කෙනෙක් නේ නෑ රෙගියුලේටර් කෙනෙක් නේ නෑ ඒ විල් ලුක් ඉන්ටු දැට් සර් දැන් ලුක් ඉන්ටු දැට් කියලා හරි යන්න ඈ ඈ ඈ සර් ඈ මෙන් ඈ මෙන් ඈ තින් ද ඒජිස් පර්සන් වෙන්ට් ඇට් ද රොන්ග් ටයිම් ඈ වී හැව් විල් හැව් අ චැට් විත් ඇට්ලින් ජනරල් සර් ඔන් දැට් फिनेंस मिनिस्टर के कैसीनो रेगुलेशन का ना कार्ट के ने काउंट में तो नहीं लाना है ने हाँ नो आई मीन दिस 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 इस दिस इस अ स्पेशल वन नो रेगुलेट गेमिंग एक्टिविटीज विद इन द पोर्ट ऑफ यू नो योर अथॉरिटी No, we have yeah. Yeah. see i my advice to you yeah. is don't try to reinvent the wheel yeah. right because already under the directions of the president and he asked us also uh, for for assistance in that matter and we have a subcommittee working on it the ministry of finance uh, has started uh, working on the regulations for uh, casinos and gaming so why don't you Uh, why don't you work with them instead of not why don't you? Yeah, no, we so will, that's we will, fine, sir. That's fine. Totally that's fine, fine, sir. We can work with so, them. So, so, so we will direct you. Uh, we will direct you to immediately get in touch with the with the Ministry of Finance, and become a part of that team 
and perhaps become a member of the subcommittee of of this group also through the committee on public finance so that we can have one acceptable piece yes. of legislation that's fine sir yes yes he is a member of our commission sir yes yes in fact um, we told him there is no necessity for him to be present today he is inundated with a with a lot of work <laughs> the man is working 24/7 <laughs> so we didn't want to tax him further um right then so that's that's resolved then huh? yes. so that direction holds huh? that they will have to work with the minister of finance on this one uh then uh then quorum uh audit now we have discussed accountants to the commission shall be audited annually by qualified auditor in terms of article 154 all that we have now resolved yes uh financial statement compliance with international ifs ifrs stand commission may delegate such powers duties functions under this act commission may either determine either to the director general or any officer of the commission or any person holding position responsible employed by the commission and the director general now there is no director general no he is only acting yeah so when are you planning on recruiting a permanent director general mr chairman saying this because we have about 2 million uh, investments in the pipeline and there was a bit of concern among them also so yes i'm reiterating i, I mean our i mean we are very happy we are extremely happy that we were able to help you uh, you know have the website live and also <laughs> the audit completed within a week so we are very happy so we it's a win win no yeah. it's no problem you also yeah. share this uh, you know the fruits of the success and yeah. let you. us also choice <laughs> choice <laughs> right right uh then in 25 uh yeah because the issue last time was mr chairman you are in charge not the director general right the powers duties and functions of the director general shall be to recommend various things that's all he has the power to it is the commission that formulates these regulations so that is the reason so we, we works, no no precisely so that is the reason yes. that uh, the commission has to be here yes. because the director general as ex officio a commission member he has to be that's a separate matter but it is you who's got the authority to do it not the director general per se uh, uh application of registration licensing right uh Uh, every application shall specify the total value of the proposed foreign direct investment all that is included in the application form right no foreign currency deposits in an account maintained or operated in sri lanka can be used cannot be used so is that a good thing so given the crisis we are in i think that we can revisit later fresh infusion yeah. of dollars i mean what is what is your what is your fundamental argument for excluding people uh uh you know who are big investors uh are prohibited from utilizing profits they generate from other business activity like some of you very uh successful business people who are sitting in this commission you know in investing uh in uh, the port city so that's a policy issue is investment yeah yes to know the issue sir but according to the act even though we like no, no, it act is no no we need uh, to no, no this was brought in later no yeah yeah in the original act there was no such thing this was brought in to address the crisis yes yes but i don't think you need to legislate something like this because a crisis i hope is we all hope is a temporary thing so why do you find a solution to a crisis and then legislate it as a permanent thing 
I mean, why don't you do it off the legislation? So, Mr. Chairman, we have done a panelist of the Act also, so that is one of the recommendations that I have in mind. Oh, what I suggested yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. So, we are thinking alike on that one. So, that's… Yeah. What, what do you the other, other commissioners think? I mean, our job is not just to ask you questions and approve this, but also to uh, Chairman, Chairman, I, constructively I, bring in our own views. I, yes. I, I suggest that uh, while we are working, you know, around the Act to make it as best as we could, but, you know, the Act also restrains certain best ease of doing businesses. So, shall we also work separately change in the act or improving the act so that we what we are going to bake would be a, a world class uh, uh, thing but every time we bring this up in the commission it says oh change in the act will be an impossible thing it will have to go to parliament and all sorts of stuff comes in so then we step back and try to work within the act but then that's not going to uh, i i case. endorse i endorse mr koritwaku's uh, uh, sort of suggestion I think it is good because you know there is no 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 restriction in amending something uh, if it's going to get better, right? If you can make it better. So right? ENY and, has and, uh, sorry, ENY has done it, and they have come up with certain act amendment uh, points as well. So we'll put this also into that and do a good. Uh, yeah, but then uh, but there has to be some logical reason. Yeah. Right. Logical reason. So, so let's do that. We are here to help you and uh, do call upon us if, I mean, we can certainly uh, take it up. We can certainly take it up. And anyway, the, 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 your, minister, your minister is the president, right? Yes. Right, he's inundated with many, many things. And uh, we can help you uh, resolve this because I think there are certain amendments that need to be brought into this act. But this act has certain shortcomings in our view. Uh, right, so that is one. Yeah, because you can't do it, no, it yeah, has yeah. to be the ministry. <laughs> right, so we will make that uh, uh, recommendation. The Commission shall obtain concurrence of any relevant regulatory authority in process of granting such registration, license, authorization, and other approval, where so required by the representative written laws applicable to such authority in respect of the subject vested in or assigned to such authority and to extent specifically provided for in this act so this is the this is the issue now in your in your in your gasser it says concurrence or direction so i think this is uh, this is beyond my uh, you know uh, sort of uh, authority in this committee because it is who takes precedence I don't know why you said concurrence slash direct direction here when it says concurrence here. But if it says concurrence here, it has to be the same thing here. But in any case, you know, this, this is stronger than this. Your head of legal, what is your position on that? Uh, we are also tying up with other regulatory authorities that are defined in the act, like the register of companies, immigration, immigration. This may be pertaining to that, but let me look at this more closely. You know, don't bite more than you can chew. Huh? I mean, you can't be the immigration regulator, the casino regulator, the financial regulator. Do you have the capabilities? Do you have the people? Do you have the expertise? But how much can you do? You have a voluntary board. You don't have a director general. How many staff do you have? Eleven. Huh? Eleven. Eleven people can't do. One person is central bank. The other person is the gaming regulator. Come on, be reasonable. Do what, undertake what you can deliver. Don't undertake things you cannot deliver. So don't overpromise, underpromise. Right. So, so looks like you all are just saying, give it, give it, we'll do it, we'll do it. But you no. don't have the capacity. No, no. no. We work with the other regulators. So, so that is the point. Yes. So other regulators are established by law. That's right. And they have been around and have been regulating domestic business for youngs. Right? So it is, it is 
for you, so who finally gives the license, offshore banking license? Who Central gives the license? Central 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 so, uh, Chairman, sir, again, we are not in any way trying to say we are the regulator of everything, right? So, specifically for banking, right? The rules and regulations will be proposed and passed in consultation between the finance ministry and the monetary board, right? So that uh, that is as per the act. We are in consultation with the working committee established by the uh, monetary board within the central bank, and that's the deputy governor is, is chairperson of that uh, working committee, to look at and devise a structure that actually works to develop a financial center within the Colombo port city. So that would come in. No, Mr. Vikramasuri, that's not my question. My question is who's got the authority under the law, right? You are exempted from a bunch of existing laws, correct? Now, even after those exemptions, now my simple question is an example that, for instance, if somebody wants to have a also banking license, yeah. You know, who is going to give that license? The finance ministry in consultation with the monetary board as per part uh, seven of the, sorry, part eight of the act. Yeah, so that means it is, what is your job? To coordinate. Coordinate, sir. Right. But then, why are you saying in this gasset you have to get concurrence? Where is that? Six. It doesn't say Right? Read that, please. Do you know, uh, because it's a very, it's the most crucial yeah, one. Chairman, no? sir, do you mind referring the, yes, the section, yeah, sir? Yes, it is uh, Gasset, uh, part one, section six. Right, so shall I read it? In the event the applicant requires a regulatory license, registration, license, authorization, and no other approval from a regulatory authority, okay? In terms of the application, in terms of the applicable written laws, okay, to engage in any business in, to invest in, to reside in, or to be employed in the area of authority of the Colombo Port City, the applicant shall submit the relevant application for such registration, license, authorization, and no other approval as prescribed in the applicable written law to the commission as a single window investment facilitator. Okay, no. The commission shall forward the application together with the letter of approval in principle in terms of regulation 5F to the relevant regulatory authority for its concurrence slash decision. So all what you are doing is you are a post box. Yes. Right, you just collect it and give it. And the written law has regulations which specifies A, B, C, and D. So therefore, you are getting concurrence meaning for your principal acceptance in principle, approval in principle. But the decision is ultimately theirs. Yes, yes. So that is why there is no provision for you to set up a, a regulatory body. You are, are only not, a post office. We are not going to do that. Sir. You know, in terms of the regulations for the gaming and casinos, you said you all are beginning to draft uh, laws for the, the, the gaming regulation. So you can't do that. But it doesn't, it doesn't give you the authority to do that. draft regulation, we are reviewing it and then we will submit it to the relevant authority. Who is the relevant authority? We work with the finance ministry. The finance ministry is not the regulator for casinos. So it is not, there is no regulator. Exactly. So you have no business regulating uh, casino regulations. You have no business doing that. Yeah, exactly. So, so don't, yeah, so we, just we let go. Want to. Yeah. We are only drafting it, maybe pro give the draft yeah. because I think maybe when the act was drafted, there was no uh, gaming uh, regulator even envisaged at that time. Right, so maybe okay. that's why they exempted it. But we sure don't want see, to be a see, regulator. I mean, we you, don't you, you, uh, law cannot be ad hominem, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know, law cannot be uh, time specific see. either. Law has to be 
the same today, tomorrow, and the day after. That is how you build confidence in a legal system. Absolutely. Right? And also, the law cannot be like ad hominem, particularly made for a person. So therefore, you know, do what is appropriate. So that's all I have to say here, right? So you are just a post office to get the, get the approval from the, this thing. It says, to ensure processing of applications made to the commission is carried out in an expeditious manner, the commission shall require any relevant regulatory authority to operate an office within the area of authority of the Colombo Port City. Now, who are your main uh, co-conspirators? Wrong ROC. word. Registrar Collaborators. Company. Registrar companies is Registrar one. Companies. So do they have an office? No. They not yet, sir. Once we set up the office one. So no, you are we, not going to set up an office in sir, five years? No? no, we are already working with them. That is they why have no, I am asking, people, I'm asking you what is in the act. Yes. It says On second month, uh, they will operate an office within the, within the area of the authority yes. of the Kalama Board City. That's right. Right. So are they operating an office? So we don't have any infrastructure in the Port City. No, man. So, yes, I know but that. But they have, sir, designated officials Officer working. working. Uh, That's w th that is how it's supposed yeah. to work, no, uh, Mr. Director General. Does it work like that? I mean, why was it, why was it put in here? Mr. Chairman, I think what we have done in the ROC is now ROC has gone into an EROC, uh, virtual. So, we have now doing a link so that it can approvals can be done simultaneously for the ROC. Shall I tell you? Yeah. Somebody, I call the register of uh, what is that intellectual property, IPR. Yeah. I, I, yeah. They wanted a logo. You know how long it has taken now? 14 months. Yeah. That is why 14 we months. Huh? Yes, I agree. 14 months. That is where we are trying to get that nah. link done so that we can so get actually we are investing about overnight. 10 million to develop their system yes. as well na na e golang system ni bolana metana tiyene central bank officer kene kinne pai scc officer kene kinne pai insurance board officer kene in regulate oy okkoma regulators lage officer kene o golange tanaka inne pai they have so ide ai eka karanna athe lekantu wage man ahanne Yes. So the infrastructure, Mr. Chairman, is when are you, when are you getting the infrastructure? No, so I think as soon as we are alive, we'll, uh, we'll get them in. Already customs and all are working with us internally. I mean, we have we provided desk space. Yeah. We have uh, provided desk space yeah. when right now it's not relevant for them to sit here because not, I mean, nothing much is happening. But, but we have created a space for them to come and sit um, when the operation starts. Okay. You know better. Uh, that was designed when we were designing the place. We designed spaces for the, uh, the relevant parties to come. But right now, our issue is the whole, um, we haven't finalized what we are giving. So we are not getting enough customers coming in at the moment. Fine. As long as you have a plan yeah. so that it won't get, uh, you know, unnecessarily delayed. That's, that's the whole point. Yes. Then in 35, Authorized person permitted to engage in business shall be remunerated in a designated foreign currency other than the Sri Lankan rupee. So what are the designated foreign currencies that a person can be remunerated in? So that's as per the central bank directions on designated foreign currencies and they have I think about 14 currencies. If I'm not mistaken. You can be paid in any of those currencies? Pretty much. The resident exempt from income tax shall be deemed to be permissible credit to a person foreign currency account of such resident employee. So they don't have to pay any tax at all. Yes. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. So if you are working overseas, right? If you are a so resident, non-resident uh, uh, clarification is according to the current laws, or is it special for the uh, special for the uh, for the port city? Uh, how do you become a resident? For tax purposes. Sorry, this uh, the the reference to the tax-free status, personal income tax-free status, is an employee of an authorized person. So, if an employee of an authorized person, that's a person who receives the license, is paid, and that person would be paid in a designated foreign currency, that income earned is supposedly exempted from income tax as per the uh, this uh, the CPEC Act. 
employment income of a resident employee. Yeah. Re resident employee. Residency apply. So days. That's correct. That correct. doesn't apply here because that is for if you are paid in rupees in Sri Lanka. Because in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. you can't be paid in a foreign currency. If I am employed, I'm paid in rupees. So if I am to be non resident, I must be out of the country for more than 186 mm -hmm. days. In the port city, if you are an employee of an authorized person and paid in one of the designated <laughs> currency, you are exempted from tax. I don't know. So that's fine. I mean, I see complications arising, but then that's for us to resolve. Because well, you're, yeah. you're, you're, at, actually, right? you're living in Dehiwala, <laughs> and you're working inside the port city. Your neighbors pay 36% yeah. tax. But you that anomaly no will be there for the first five years till people get in there. But this I hope the government, I Dubai. hope you don't let any government organization set up any business there. Yes. But they but will, they will, cannot, they will, but this <laughs> they will bring all the political catchers and. But this family they are in Dubai as well, sir. If you are in DIFC, right, and you are working outside, you will have different regulations compared to another Dubai employee. So whenever you have and special BYC zone, BYC this problem BYC is there. Ch Chairman, sir, if I may add, I think. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, go ahead. go ahead. Yeah, I think if I may add, the the objective of the Colombo Port City is not to fill it up with companies that are actually established to do business with the 22 million people in Sri Lanka, right? It is an export-oriented zone that you're looking at. So the idea is to attract people, and, and the objective is, for example, if uh, a, a multinational, a shipping multinational or a, a firm that's based, headquartered in, in Singapore, right, is doing their regional office and covering business globally, for them to come and establish here. It's not that they come in there and establish themselves there and then start serving the Sri Lankan market. Of course. Yeah, so, so... I mean, we understand that that's a fundamental yeah. basis for doing this, no? I mean, but we would like to have at least some of our people employed there. Absolutely yeah. possible. And what, what we hope to achieve here is our people are now going into Singapore or to Dubai and working for that multinational. But we would like that multinational to be based here and then hire them to work in that and serve their global franchise. Okay, right. Thank you very much. I think uh, we've had a very fruitful discussion. Uh, we have no other questions, um, and uh, uh, we will approve these uh, regulations so we can, uh, you can, or rather your minister can put it to the house next week, and we can approve them. Um, we made some uh, observations. Uh, we gave one direction, which is that you should work with the Ministry of Finance on the regulations on casinos. We made some recommendations. We will let you have all those, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I hope uh, this becomes a, a roaring success. And if there is anything that we can do, uh, we will be more than happy to help you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. This is urgent. Thanks.